Hey you guys, welcome to today's video, Sunscreen Saturday. Today we're taking a look at something Angie looked at a couple of weeks ago. That is Dr. G Green Mild Up Sun 50 SPF plus 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 plus. It's the highest number of pluses and the pluses are something that are used in other countries, Asian countries and in the EU to designate UVA protection. This is what the bottle looks like. As always, I'm going to put this on and then I'm going to put on my Reboot, which is the foundation that I use for all my sunscreen tests so we can see how it gets along. I've already put on my skin care and I look a little bit of red because I use my Foreo today. So, I, <laughs> and I did a massage. There's a lot of blood on the surface and I'm still playing around with my skin care since I did my Wow, my brain, it's morning, can you tell? Hi Lucy. Since I've done my laser, because I found that I was getting a little sensitive to vitamin C. So I'm not doing 100% my usual program, but it's all on and I'm ready to apply. But before we do, let's get into the ingredients. Woo, dirty. This 100% mineral UV filter is formulated with mild ingredients suitable for sensitive skin. It supports skin barrier and is a great shield against pollutants, industrialization, and stress factors. It reflects UVA and UVB rays from skin surface. I think they mean from the skin surface. It is also a natural booster that absorbs blue light generated by TVs, PC monitors, and we're going to say foam. Glycofilm protects skin from dust absorption. French pine bark extract as an antioxidant relieves skin stress and sunscreen also contains a skin lipid mixture, which is ceramides, something I can't pronounce, phyto, spinning, Osin and cholesterol, which support skin barrier improvement. I actually use a moisturizer that is a combination of ceramides, cholesterol, and I'll write it down right here, but it mimics the skin's barrier. So this is just going to help support it. It is zinc oxide. There's also emollients that can be moisturizing. There's a couple of other things I wanted to mention in the antioxidant category. We have Centella Asiatica, which is very healing, calming, soothing to the skin, something I can't pronounce, and Pinus Pinister Bark Extract. I believe Pinus is pine, so it's probably pine tree, and Tocopherol, which is vitamin E. Skin identicals include glycerin, the safflower oil I mentioned, cholesterol, ceramide EOP, ceramide NP, and ceramide AP. So it's a good selection of ceramides. And that's about it. Let's go get our teaspoon and put it on the face. You guys, I'm interrupting from the future. I started to edit this to post for tomorrow. And I wanted to look up how to spell a couple of things that I couldn't pronounce. And when I did, I found that there was a pretty big discrepancy. So I go to the Inky Decoder to get my information about the ingredients, if they're in another language. And actually, even if they're not, because it's easy, it's all in one place, and it's big enough for me to read, as opposed to using one of these and my glasses to read ingredients on the box. In this case, the product's from Korea, and all of the ingredients are listed in Korean. So I went and did a little look up, and I did this video based on that, and when I went to go look up how to spell something, I realized that there are no fewer than four different descriptions of the ingredients for this particular product. So I hit the one that said 2021, thinking, okay, maybe they have updated their ingredient deck. That would make sense. It happens. And I found that there were several things that I talked about in this video that are not mentioned. Some of them I edited out and some of them I am keeping in because there was a note on Inky Decoder saying that there was something wrong with the listing, but they couldn't be specific about what it was. 
there are a couple of things when you list ingredients they have to be by weight in the United States and in the EU and they have to be a couple of other little things and I'm not sure for instance if there are ceramides in this because the box I threw away but I do remember looking at it going okay it's it's all in Korean <laughs> and I I just don't know I do know that when I shot this, I said that there was titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, and when I saw it on the 2021 listing, it only had titanium dioxide, which would suggest that the person who did the entry in 2021 was either wrong and missed some things, or they reformulated it and the other things were right. It's a little confusing, and these are just the peripheral, if you will, ingredients, things like ceramides, things like glycerin were, was listed and it wasn't listed in this one, and that's a skin identical, but you get the gist. It's got the sunscreen in it. What else it has in it? I'm not 100% sure, but at the same time, I think I list more ingredients than any other sunscreen review that I watch, where they're usually like, okay, it's mineral, and they splash them on their face. So I just wanted to be 100% upfront and clear to you, and now we will continue on. If you're new here, we always apply a quarter teaspoon. The equation is two millimeters per centimeter squared of surface, and that roughly is a quarter teaspoon for your face. I do generally face and neck. Face sizes don't actually vary all that much, surprisingly. So a quarter teaspoon is a good measurement to start with, and most people use far less than that. So I'm going to disperse into here and then put it in my hand so you can see what a quarter teaspoon looks like. So the tip makes me think it's going to be milky, but, well, let's see. It looks like it's heaping, but when you look at the spaces there, no, probably not. It's probably right. And it's not. It's kind of thick. In fact, there's a lot left in here that I'm just going to take out. All right, let's put it in. So this is a Korean sunscreen. I got this at Amazon, and I will link it below for you. But to me, <laughs> the whole point about Korean sunscreens two things. One, they're affordable, and two, they use the next generation sun filters, the juveniles and the tinosorbs. These two ingredients, there's two of each actually, are approved in Europe, they're approved in Asia, they're apparently approved everywhere but Canada and the United States, and they are far, far more stable chemicals than the ones that we have in the United States. Agobenzines, octocrylines, you know the deal. And that's why I like them. And they're also better priced. And yes, there has been some issues with Korean sunscreens in the past year. But I've read up about it and I've watched some videos from people who are chemists, people who are informed, and I am wary of some brands, but I'm still interested. And of course, whatever happened does not include the Japanese sunscreens because they have a different way of doing things. And it's, it's a long story, it's kind of confusing. It's not really confusing, it's just that it would be unfair to just say all Korean sunscreens are bad because that's not true. But there is a reason to be a little bit careful. Okay, it's rubbed in. It doesn't feel um, as thick as it looks. So at first I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be like one of those drugstore things. It's not. It goes on very nicely. It... I don't think it's necessarily moisturizing, to tell you the truth. And I am kind of concerned that once it dries down, it might feel tightening, but I can tell you that I'm not experiencing the pins and needles that I often experience with zinc oxide. 
so that's good. But there is, it's like I can feel the weight of it on my skin. I can't explain. And I put some on my hands and it almost feels like I'm putting some hand lotion in my hands. So it does have that, I don't want to say greasy, but there are lipids in here, right? Which are fats. So I get that. But at the same time, I don't know. It doesn't feel moisturizing. So we'll see. I'm going to give this 10 minutes to see if the whiteness abates at all. As it is right now, I would say it's not something I'm going to put on and leave the house because I do see a bit of a white tint. And I guess I'm going to feed her because she's making some noise, even though it's an hour before your dinner time or breakfast time. I'm back. It's been a few minutes. And it still has a white cast to it. And it still has a weird feeling to it. Like there's a filmy feeling. That's what it is. It's like a film on my hands. So I... I take back, it feels like hand lotion. I mean, it kind of does, but with hand lotion, it kind of sinks in usually. And this feels like a film on the skin. This is also supposed to be matte, and I would say it's pretty close to matte. Not 100%. So let's go on with the reboot and see what happens. I am, you guys, feeling a little bit of tingling. So the minute I turned off the camera, I went into the kitchen to start something to eat, and I felt some tingling on the cheek. And I'm feeling some tingling right around here, the forehead. So I'm not sure if this is the formula that's going to work for me. But sometimes that tingling goes away. You know, I think when you put on the foundation, you can see just how much of a white cast it leaves. So I certainly tried some drugstores that just leave an enormous amount of white. But this one is not as bad, but it certainly does leave some. So I would say, if you're very, very fair, this might be something you can put on and go about your day without foundation. There's no balling or pilling going on. And now let's look at the mirror. So there's issues around the nose. There always is because there's so many curves and things, but you got to be careful with the nose blend in and really take a look. I don't really see any issues at all. I would say it looks, you know, they say that it's a matte finish. I didn't find it to be entirely matte. And you saw what I looked like with just my skincare. I was not super shiny. And now I'm looking more shiny. Right? Check out that forehead. So I, it's true I didn't use a matte foundation, so maybe that's part of it. But I think I was expecting it to be more matte. So you know what, you guys? I think I might come back in a little bit and just check in with you to see if those pins and needles have subsided because I'm still feeling them. You guys, I've been wearing this for about a half an hour, and I think I want to put on some makeup over it, because when I picked up my mirror, it felt like it was going to slip out of my hand. There's a feeling about this that it has a film that stays. The foundation looks good. I do look, I think, less shiny than I normally do. Let's just do the back and forth and see if that shine has kind of pulled back a bit. I didn't put on any powder or anything, but I do want to put on a couple of powder products to see how this is going to work. So I'm going to start with a cream blush, and this is the Clé de Peau. No problem with that. The skin doesn't feel slippy, but on my hands I, I can tell this is a film. But it feels okay. It doesn't feel dry 100%, especially on the forehead. But when I touch it, the foundation isn't moving. It's not leaving fingerprints. Okay, so that's good. That's good, because that's was kind of my main concern. Is it going to move when I use a powder blush or any kind of powder, bronzer or whatever it might be? Will it move if I just touch it? So, it, no, I don't think it will. Let's go on with, let's go on with some uh, powder bronzer. I don't really feel like I need bronzer today because the reboot is becoming a little too dark for me now. Just a little bit. I'm going to eventually have to retire it for a few months. Hmm. 
Hmm. No problem. No problem. Okay, now let's do a little blush. This is the Hermes Rose Plume, which is very springy, but <laughs> may as well continue with the spring vibe until winter is actually here. No problem at all. The cheek area looks very, very nice. It's not falling into the area, the crevice in the nose. It's not falling into any area at all. It just has a slightly, for me, slightly icky feeling about it. That filmy feeling. I have to say, so far, I'm, I have experienced a little bit of that tingling, and I'm still feeling that tingling a little bit. Um, I've certainly had worse, 100%. But it's not 100% comfortable on me, but I'm not sure that bothers me so much as this filmy feeling, this weird feeling on my face that I'm not in love with. It performs very nicely with makeup. It leaves a very nice finish. It does. Uh, and, you know, it's up for you to decide. Those are my facts as I see them. I'm not sure this is one that I'm going to enjoy wearing, but I can always retire it to my chest, which is what I tend to do if something doesn't work on my face. It, it, that filmy feeling is, it kind of bugs me. So you guys, them's my thoughts. That's what I think. It's okay. It's not going to be a favorite for me at all. But if you are dying to do something with zinc, if you only do minerals, I think it's well worth checking out. I think if you have oily skin, you might not be comfortable with this. So I think it might be very nice for people with normal to dry skin. And that's it for today's video, you guys. I want to thank you so much for spending some time with me. Give me a thumbs up. I should have said that in the beginning. And uh, come back again. I'll put my playlist right over here. I also should have done that in the beginning. So you can take a look at other sunscreens. And I hope you come back again. And yeah, ciao.